AC flying school. Our pre-flight briefing this time on the circuit approach and landing. Our aim is to fly a normal circuit approach and landing. Why we need to cover this is again we need to fit ourselves into that traffic pattern around other aircraft at an airfield. For example again here at Barton. Our threat and air management as always other airplanes on the ground and in the air as we are around the airfield, engine overheating, cooling and wake turbulence from other traffic. Errors we can make is overstressing the flaps as we use them on the approach and landing, attempting to land in unsuitable circumstances, bounced landing or a runway excursion where the aircraft unintentionally departs the runway. So how are we going to manage this? We're going to keep that lookout going at all times. Be listening out on the radio, again building situational awareness. Your performance calculation, especially important on the four-seat aircraft. Your full power checks before you take off, use of car heat, ATC and their service to you. Again, building your picture. Make sure we have a stable approach or we do a go around, which is just a normal manoeuvre. The air exercise itself initially would demonstrate to you a normal circuit. We've split these two briefings up, but normally we do fly this as one lesson. The revision of the takeoff and crunch downwind we covered in the last briefing. So, the normal circuit approach. We'll start us off on the downwind leg, where it's a thousand feet above ground level, flying the reciprocal runway heading, correcting our correct distance out from the airfield. And what we're looking for for the PA 28s would be the wingtip running along the centre line. For the high wing aircraft, we would just need to have the airfield in an appropriate position running through the canopy. What we're looking for down here is to complete our pre landing checks, and you'll find those in your checklist. And we want to do those no more than about 10 to 15 seconds. We're also looking when we're beam the upper end of the runway to have done our radio call. If we haven't been able to get our radio call in, a beam, after that point, it, the call would be late downwind. At this point now, we're positioning ourselves, hopefully we've got some time, and we're thinking ahead, which is the main thing. And we are now anticipating our next turn, which is onto the base leg. What we're looking for is for one to one and a half chords past the threshold, is the point at which to turn base leg. So anticipate that point, keep in mind where it's coming, do a good lookout, and then turn base. At that point, we're looking for to be 45 degrees to the threshold, at which point now we'll put the carpet on, reduce the power initially to about 1500 RPM, and hold the attitude. The airspeed will decay. Once you're in the white arc, we want to select either 20 or 25 degrees of flap, depending on the aircraft you fly. Still holding that attitude. Then when we get to our configuration speed for base, then lowering the nose to pitch for the airspeed. Remembering that attitude controls the airspeed, power controls the rate of descent. From this point on, we're now starting to judge our rate of descent on the base leg and starting to monitor our descent. As a rule of thumb, we're looking for around 600 feet to be turning onto final. But essentially, when we're closing and we're approaching that extended centre line, coming away from the runway, we want to be judging that turn on to final. So again, the key point is to anticipate that turn, do a good look out, and then judge the turn to position yourself on that extended centre line. 
Once we're now on the centre line, or on the final approach coming into the runway, we're going to select full flap and then configure for that final speed, again depending on the aircraft, make sure the aircraft's in trim. We're going to call final on the radio to announce our position and at 300 feet we're going to put the carpet to cold. Remembering as you're coming down we're using the attitude to control the airspeed, the power to control the rate of descent and there is a relationship between those two. As you're coming in, I suggest from the point at which you turn final, I tend to use a sort of mini work cycle, scanning your attitude, your airspeed, your aiming point and alignment. So you've got four things to think about to be in the correct place, to be multitasking, to have a stable approach coming into the runway. And I can't emphasize that enough, we're looking for a stable approach. Especially as we're coming down towards the runway, we're going to be key use of an aiming point. An aiming point is a reference going to be outside the nose. And we're going to use the runway numbers over here. We're looking for those to be a third of the way up the canopy. So from the bottom of the engine cowling, bottom of the canopy, a third of the way up is where we want that aiming point. And that's going to judge our descent coming in. Especially as we're coming close to the runway, as we get low down, we're then just scanning the runway aspect and airspeed. Runway aspect and airspeed. How that aiming point and the runway aspect looks and the airspeed. And that will judge you coming into the runway. From finally, as we're coming in, we then start looking at the landing itself. At the appropriate position and appropriate height, we then flare the aircraft, and we do what's called a round out. We're tra transferring our aiming point and our view now to the end of the runway to judge that flare, and then pitching the nose up to select an initial landing attitude, whereby we're looking to reduce the rate of descent. We're now looking to keep the aircraft flying as long as we can and land on the main wheels. So you now simultaneously as we flare, closing the throttle, then as the aircraft starts to sink again, pitching the nose up to that final landing attitude and holding off as long as we can. Again, keeping the nose wheel up, holding the aircraft off until the aircraft lands on the main wheels. Once the main wheels have touched down, we now keep protecting that nose wheel by keep applying the back pressure on the yoke. So again, just for that landing, we're transferring our view and our look towards now the end of the runway horizon, helping to use your peripheral vision to judge that flare height, then pitching the nose up to an initial flare, and then starting to hold off by selecting the final landing attitude and aiming to touch down on the main wheels first. What we'll find is during your training, we're going to do some touch and goes, whereby we're going to land, then apply full power and take off again. So, as we land, we then keep the aircraft straight using the rudder. We want to raise the flaps, make sure the carpet is off, and then smoothly apply full power. Then we transition ourselves back into the takeoff. Now we talked about a stable approach or a go around. And very important that if we don't have a stable approach, we don't try and push on, we don't have press on itis to land the aircraft. That is historically shown as many a cause and accidents. If we want to do a go around, for whatever reason, it would not be safe to continue the landing. We just make sure the car beat is off and smoothly apply full power. We then pitch the nose to the horizon and then reduce the drag flap, which is the last stage of flap. If we didn't do that point, we would then struggle to climb. 
Remember that attitude controls your airspeed now, you have full power on. We now want to pitch the nose and establish the aircraft in a climb. Once the aircraft is climbing and above 300 feet AGL, we can then retract the rest of the flap in stages. We want really to have a stable approach, a minimum of 200 feet away from the ground. So we make that decision early if we're going to go around. If we make that decision early, or a reason for a go around could have been an aircraft could have pulled onto the runway. Naturally, it would not then be safe to continue. We then want to position the aircraft to the dead side. And then fly parallel with the runway. This allows you to keep in view any traffic that might have been on the runway. You want to then climb the aircraft up to a thousand feet and then fit yourself back into the traffic pattern. If in the event we do a bounced landing, which is a threat, we could apply full power and do this similar go around technique. Just remember to not make any large movements or large pitches or banks near the ground. So applying full power, stabilise the aircraft and then climb back up. In this case, we now just want to fly over the runway. We don't want to transition ourselves to the dead side. As I said, we don't want to be making any large banks near the ground. So we would just climb straight ahead. That is our circuit approach and landing. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.